Hi guys, this time I'm back with another video on do-it-yourself EMI filters. EMI stands for electromagnetic interference and in this video I'll tell you what it is and why you don't want to have that kind of interference in your audio equipment and how to do yourself a very simple but effective EMI filter. So the first thing is uh, what uh, EMI interferences are. Uh, well, basically, uh, our bodies and every piece of uh, unshielded wire and even shielded wires are acting as an antenna for electromagnetic waves that are everywhere around us. And I don't mean on the electromagnetic waves uh, from cellular transmissions, from radio or TV transmissions, but also from uh, things like power lines that are embedded in our walls, in our ceilings and in our floors. Uh, every power line like that uh, is uh, acting as a radio transmitter for 50 Hz uh, transmission. And uh, if, you'll, you'll be, if, you'll, uh, if you have an oscilloscope, you can actually check that. Uh, you can use the probe to connect it to your body and uh, on the oscilloscope screen you'll be able to see uh, 50 Hz sinusoidal mm, uh, I'm missing a word, word for uh, um, flow, current flow, current flow, signal flow. Uh, so basically your body will be acting as an antenna for the power lines that are delivering power to your devices. And the same goes, as I said, for cell phones, uh, for radio and TV transmissions, etc., etc., even uh, for the electromagnetic uh, wave disruptions, disruptions like, for example, when you're vacuuming your house and you're using uh, a motor in your vacuum. Uh, all of this uh, generates uh, EMI interference. And uh, there are types of equipment that are very sensitive to that kind of interference, uh, especially uh, some precise uh, laboratory equipment, uh, some medical equipment, etc. And uh, these devices are using uh, EMI filters. EMI filters are used to filter incoming interference, but they are also used to block outgoing interference. If your device is emitting any kind of um, harmful EMI interference, this kind of filter is supposed to block it, block it from entering back to the power grid. So what this actually does, it has a transformer, a couple of cap capacitors and a couple of resistors. And the idea is that this uh, electronic uh, circuit uh, will block all high uh, frequencies. Uh, filters I, 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 sorry, filters like that uh, are very cheap because this one had cost me uh, about two dollars. Uh, they are made by companies like Schaffner, which is one of the oldest and most recognizable brands uh, in this market. Uh, TDK, um, uh, as you can see, uh, Beat, and a couple of uh, other companies that are specializing in delivering this kind of small devices. Um, and uh, what I wanted to talk with you about today is how to turn something like that in your own self homemade EMI filter. It's very cheap, it's very easy and it's a very quick thing to do. The first thing is to buy a filter like that, noise filter. Uh, you can buy these off uh, eBay uh, Amazon sometimes, uh, AliExpress sometimes. Uh, some of them will be new, some of them will be used, uh, removed from the uh, medical equipment. Uh, the brands I recommend are, as I said, uh, TK, Schaffner, Schaffner filters will be the most expensive of the bunch, uh, and Beat. Uh, these ones are very cheap. Uh, I actually got like seven of them. Uh, and I've tested them and they work uh, as well as uh, sharpeners, so I guess I'll stay, I'll stick with them. And I was doing these filters for all my family and friends uh, to give them as a gift, because this is something that really improves the sound uh, with uh, minimum um, expense. Uh, as I said, this kind of filter is like two bucks. What you'll need? 
Uh, you'll need the plastic uh, universal enclosure. Uh, these enclosures are consisting of the main body and a closing part like that. Some of them uh, are IP uh, rated uh, for uh, water, but you won't be needing uh, anything like that because uh, what you'll be doing is you'll be doing some holes in this casing. So the first thing, filter. The second thing, universal plastic made uh, casing. The casing is another two dollars, I think. And what you'll need is a wall mount uh, plug for your 20, 220 volts or your 110 volts, because you can get uh, filters like that also for 110 volts. This one is rated for 250. So if you're living in the States, be sure to get one that's rated for 110 volts. And be sure to get the plug that's uh, used in your country. United Kingdom will have another type of plug, United States with, uh, will have another type of plug, and uh, European Union will have something like that. Uh, so, the main idea is to cut the box and cut two holes in the box. The first hole should be rectangular in order to place the body of the filter inside. And the other should also be rectangular in order to be able to push inside the plug, the wall wall plug. And what you need to do is you need uh, to remove the connector that comes uh, with your filter. Yeah, this one also. You can see that these lines are marked. These lines are marked. Uh, this one is ground. Uh, the red one in this case will be line, which will be active and the blue one will be neutral. You will need to find the markings on your plug and connect life to life, neutral to neutral and ground to ground. And that's basically it. It's a very easy thing. After you cut the original plug, if it comes with that kind of plug, uh, you need to either screw the connectors uh, with the wire, bell wire, uh, if you have that kind of plug, or you can mount this kind of small plugs on your cable in order to move them here. So it's like, uh, I'd say for the insides, it's like 15 minutes job at most. Uh, the most time uh, would be consumed by cutting the holes uh, in a nice way. Uh, you can cut these holes using uh, the Dremel tool uh, or you can use uh, your soldering iron to just cut uh, with hot iron the rectangular shape and then to use your knife or something like that to, um, to polish the edges. And that's basically it. Uh, in total, it would be like seven, six or seven bucks uh, for the whole thing. So it's uh, very cheap, it's very quick to make. And uh, now, as I said, why do we make this? Why do you need something like that? You'll connect your power line input in here and you'll use your cable, power cable to connect your digital to analog converter, your power amplifier, your speaker amplifier, your headphone amplifier, or anything else that you'll want to have um, with uh, clean and distorted uh, power supplies. Uh, and uh, the important thing uh, is to remember that this cleans all the incoming EMI and outgoing EMI. But if you use unshielded cable after this plug and between this device and your other electronic device, you'll be catching so, some EMI again into the cable. So the best idea would be to use something that's shielded, some kind of shielded power cable that you'd be connecting uh, between this EMI filter and your electronic device in order not to catch another set of uh, interference 
after you filter the first one coming from your power line. So now for the sound. Again, this is a very cheap device to make, but the sound changes are very significant. It gives you a very clean and black background. Uh, it uh, lets you enjoy the small details. It's hard to describe in words effect of this uh, particular one, effect of EMI filtering, because as uh, somebody smart said once, it's uh, like uh, talking about sound is like dancing about architecture. Uh, in all my reviews, I'm trying to use the right words. Uh, I am often struggling with finding the best ones. So uh, in many cases, uh, if you watch my reviews, uh, you realize that I'm using the same set of uh, verbs to describe the sound and some uh, the same set of words to uh, describe the changes that the equipment gives me. Uh, in this case, black clean background, nice set of details, and it I, I know it sounds stupid, but in a, in a way it's true. It makes your music more musical. It makes it flow easier. It makes it softer, but not in a bad way, not in a muddy and not transparent way, but like a, like a clean flow. Uh, you'll hear that for yourself. Uh, I highly recommend you doing uh, something like that because it's very cheap. It's very easy to make. Uh, it doesn't require any soldering skills. It does require some uh, hand skills because you need to cut two holes. Uh, you can then screw this filter here. Um, as always, you do something like that with your own responsibility. So if you do not understand what I'm talking about, uh, if you don't feel like you can do this yourself, just don't do that. Uh, ask your friend, ask uh, some kind of electronic shop nearby, etc. Uh, etc. Et what else about this small fry? Well, as you can see, it's coming with a standard, uh, standard sized plug. So the idea is that you can also use that kind of EMI filter with some of your electronic equipment that already uses the same sized uh, plugs. Uh, if your device like, I don't know, Blu-ray player, player um, amplifier, half hour and something like that is using the same type of plug with the same size here, there is very high probability that you'll be able to replace the standard plastic plug with the CMI filter inside. Uh, I bought a larger number of these because my plan for the next couple of days or weeks, depending on my free time, uh, will be to replace standard uh, input plugs on my Martin Logan Ascent 1 uh, speakers. They are using exactly the same sized cutouts. Uh, in the back uh, back wall of the speaker. So I guess it'll be just remove the old one, put the new one inside and enjoy the sound. And that's it. Do them, create them, listen to them. It's a very, very cheap and a very regarding mod. Uh, you'll be happy with the vessels you'll hear. So, have a nice day and until the next time.